Okay, you ready to start busting some retirement myths? I've been a fee-only financial advisor for over 20 years. And during that time, I've heard just about every myth and every excuse for why people are postponing retirement. But I don't want you to get later in life and look back and say, why didn't anybody ever tell me this? So let's bust some of these myths. The first one is, I have plenty of time. Asul, I'm only 60, I'm only 65, I'm only 70, I'm in perfect health. Why should I retire? You know, maybe, the reality is if you're 65 years old, you likely, depending on which mortality table you look at, have 12 to 15 years left of life in front of you. That's not a whole lot. So do you have plenty of time? Maybe, you know, maybe you're gonna be the outlier, but the average person doesn't have that much time and that's mortality. How much healthy active time do you have where you can pursue some other passions, when you can pursue some other things that you wanna do? Maybe if you have adult, I'm sorry, if you have elderly uh, parents that are still alive, how many more summers do you have with them? How many more holiday seasons do you have with them? So be careful with this thought that I have plenty of time because most of us unfortunately have a lot less time than we think we do. Okay, number two, a soul. I'm gonna be bored in retirement. I don't know what I would do. You know, that's not so much a myth as something that we all have to work on. And of course you may not have other passions outside of work right now because it takes a lot of time to develop passions. And when we're working and we're balancing all these different things in our lives, oftentimes we don't have time to pursue our other interests. So unfortunately, it's, you know, is it the cart before the horse or is it the horse before the cart? You know, give yourself time and, and give yourself the freedom to develop these other passions. So it's hard to develop new passions when you don't have any time to do it. Okay, the next one. You know, I saw the market's kind of scary. I, I don't want to retire now because the market's down. Um, and you know, there's a lot of validity to that, but studies have shown, you know, when the market's down, you know, there's no guarantees out there, but is the market likely going, is it easier for the market to start climbing again once it's gone down or when it's at an all-time high. It's kind of counterintuitive, but when that, the market's at an all-time high and we feel the coziest and the warmest inside, that may be, I wish I had this crystal ball, I don't, that may be when the market's most at risk of, of going down. So, so don't let that fear that, hey, the market's down, keep you from pursuing your your retirement and taking full advantage of the youth of your senior years. Another one is what I call Moore's Law. And it's not the electronics Moore's Law. It is, hey Asul, more money is always better than less. And if I keep working, I'm gonna have more money. That That is true, but let's take that to the extreme. If you really wanna optimize on your retirement balance, Work right up until the day the day before you die. But I don't think any of us wanna do that, right? We've been working a long time. We wanna take full advantage of this time that we have. Not just how many, how many years that we have left on the earth, but how many healthy, active years that we have. So be careful with that. The next one is, is psychological, you know, and a lot of these are, they're just, they're mind games that we're playing and it's this, this transition, uh, candidly, let's just call it what it is. The transition into the unknown is scary. Many of us have been working 20, 30, 40 years. We know what this life looks like. And I use the analogy of, it's almost like you're on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. And you've seen other people come from the south rim and they say, hey, it's really nice there. You know, get down there, start the hike but we can't see the other side. It's so far away. Um, and frankly, we know it's gonna be a lot of work uh, to get to the South Rim. So it's this transition, but what I can tell you, and if you, know, you have friends that are financial advisors, if, if you're working with one, 
you know, ask people that are retired, ask people that work with people that have retired. In my case, I've been a fee-only financial advisor for over 20 years. I can tell you that nine out of 10 people, once they do the transition, will say, you know what, I, I should have done this sooner. And you can't turn back the clock then. And it's one of the primary motivations for why I do these videos is, I'm not trying to convince anybody to retire early. What I'm trying to convince people to do is just be thoughtful and deliberate and think about what are the things that are holding me back and should these things be holding me back? Is there anything I could do now to help with that transition so I don't go down that path and then later say, I wish I had done it sooner. And that's, that's something that I do see in my work is, is people wishing they had made these transitions earlier. You know, I, I, I'm reminded of when I first went to college and I left home and also when my daughters first went to college and left home. And, you know, it was, it, it was super encouraging to, to see my daughters pack up everything that they, they owned in the world into a couple suitcases and go into this new environment where they knew nobody. And there was this nature to kind of hold on to what they knew, even though they knew they wanted to start their own life and their own adventure. Um, but they had to have the courage, the courage to, to move into this new life. And I can tell you, you know, none of my daughters want to, uh, to come home and go back to, you know, what life was like for them as a 16 year old uh, living in mom and dad's house with mom and dad's role. They enjoy their freedom. And it's the same thing for retirement. It's this transition. And we all need to make that transition at some time. And since we need to do it eventually, why not do it sooner if we can financially afford it? Okay, and now the number one, the, um, the, number, the number one cause uh, of people now, <coughs> excuse me, not retiring when they could. <coughs> excuse me again. And, and that is, it's the five most dangerous words um, as we get older. And it is just one more year. You know, oftentimes when we decide it's time to transition, our companies will say, you know what, we'd really love for you to stick around and to, to help with the transition. And you know, sticking around for, for several months is great, um, maybe even a year. But one more year, you know, if you're 60 years old, you've got a thousand weeks of healthy active time. And, and that is going to be 5%. But not only that, it's gonna be your healthiest, most active years. And one of the things I've seen is one more year becomes, well, just one more year and then one more year, and then you miss out on the youth of your senior years. Please, please, please don't let that happen to you. Be conscious of what the five most dangerous words are uh, for retirees. And I also want you to think about watching this video here that talks about what does the average American actually have? What is their income in retirement? Average income for retirees in America. I'll see you in that video. Bye-bye.